Hello everyone, this is your course management system module for the ACA, essentially how you are going to report your courses, do evaluations, those types of things. You can see there's a dashboard and a variety of menus on the left, but before we get too far ahead, how do you get to the course management system? If you go to the ACA website, which we have a module for that, that you hopefully recently looked at, you're going to go to the AmericanCanoe.org. From the ACA website, if you go to Education for ACA Instructors, you will click on CMS, Course Management System. That will take you to two places here. You'll think you want to cl click on the login, um, but really that login link is read more. That's where it is going to log you in. It will take you to your dashboard. It will look something like this. You can see this is my dashboard. It will show your current certifications, endorsements, and assessments when they expire, if they're active, anything that you need to know. You will also see your CPR and first aid, which is again required for you to be able to maintain your certification. Another thing required to maintain certification is that your membership the dues are up to date, so those three things have to be done. You also, again, have to report at least two courses, one at your highest level, every four years, as well as take and, and do an instructor update um, every four years. Again, that information is in the ACA website module that we previously did. You can also see your annual liability waiver. Before this course, you do need to do a couple things. You need to fill out this annual liability waiver. Make sure it is up Uploaded. I will show you where else you can find that, as well as CPR and first aid need to be uploaded before the start of the course, and you have to be a member, so make sure this is in good standing. All right, with that said, this is your dashboard. When we came in from the American Canoe Association website, let me go back here, there was another option for training system. If you click here, it will give you an option to be able to go to a training one where you can practice it because anything you do in the real one is actually live. So I'm going to use the training system. You will have access to do that as well. Before we go there, there are a couple links below. What's new in the course management system, user guides. This user guide was attached to your email and then any updates you need to be aware of. So I'm going to open up the training system to be able to show you as well. In the training system it has the dashboard just like I showed you earlier. It also has another one here not because it's training just because these haven't been cleared but it has course alerts. You can adjust these course alerts right here which I will show you in a second. Um, but when you have to complete evaluations, anything like that, it'll come up in your course alerts. Uh, once you submit a course, it will come up here and you can say, got it, thanks. And then that one will disappear. All right, so first we have your dashboard that we talked about. The dashboard is where you will come when you log in. If you wanna go back to the ACA website, you can click here. The next one you're gonna click on is course creation and maintenance. If you click here, you'll see a variety of things that is list. If you click on overview, you're gonna see that same list. So if this is easier for you to be able to look through with information, you can go here. Or again, if you don't need that information, you can just, uh, you can just click on them. So we're gonna to go to course registration, easy reporting, which would be the same thing right here. Um, so course registration, easy reporting. This is how you report a course. So you can see I have created course registrations for a couple classes. Um, that are open, they haven't been finished, but what you will do is you will add new course. When you add new course, you are going to see this is course registration, easy reporting. You can do this course registration for an upcoming course, or you can do it for easy reporting one in the past. You definitely wanna report all of your courses uh, because it allows you to make sure you have at least those two, and it's a good way to track all of the classes that you have taught. So. When you go, you'll pick the discipline and you'll only have the ones that you are certified for. So it'll probably be different than what is on my screen. One thing to keep in mind, anything that is at level one is con considered introduction to paddling or IPC. So if you're teaching a level one course, you need to choose that. And then you would choose introduction to stand up paddleboarding. 
If it is a level two course or above, you would choose stand up paddle boarding and then you would see uh, that you can choose essentials of stand up paddle boarding is for level two. It automatically populates here. For this demonstration, I will just do an introduction to paddling. I will choose introduction to paddling. It'll show up as a level one. Level one is introduction, level two is essentials. I'll choose my course type. Is it a skill or assessment? That's what you will have the opportunity to do. We're gonna choose a skills course that you taught. You'll notice when I choose skills course, this shows up below. If I choose something else, it gets rid of that. If I choose skills, it comes up. It, because, it is because this is an easy reporting form. So to make your life super simple, if you just did a class and you want to report it, it's in the past, you say it was a skills course, this is a non-insured skill easy report. If you have insurance, you need to go through the long form. And so I can say yes. When I say yes, it gets rid of all of that additional information that's down here. So I'm gonna say this one is a non-insured Skill easy report. I just want you to know how many people that I served. Total number of participants. This is the total people there. So it includes yourself. Um, if I just put one, because I had one participant, it'll say you can't have a class with just you. Uh, so let's say we had a class of uh, 10 people and I had an insisting instructor to keep that ratio. So there were 12 of us that were there. And for this one, nobody had a disability. And I and I need to finish putting this in. So uh, where I am, we have something called Hinkley Lake. We're going to say that this course was in the past and I'm just now reporting it. We're just going to choose a random date of the fourth. Oops, it's a one day course. The random date of the fourth. It is in the United States. Uh, I taught the class in Ohio and it has a zip code of um, let's just say here, and it was in Medina, okay? If there's any notes, you can add that. So it's reported, I had 12 people. Um, it was not sanctioned by a Paddle of America club, so I'm gonna say no. If I had an assisting instructor who was uh, assisting me, I can put them there. Uh, this would be to keep your one to 10 ratio. And so if they're an ACA member, put this in here, it gives them credentials as well. If they are a volunteer who doesn't happen to be an ACA member. Uh, you can just not put anything there, but you do need to make sure you have the um, ratio of having one to a uh, two to 10. If you already uploaded your signature, I can say apply that. And then I can say submit and close or submit and add another. I'm going to say submit and add another. All right, so it says that it has been accepted and I am good to go. I wanted to add another, so it brought it up so I can add another one, um, or I could have submitted and closed. So let's add another one that is not an easy report. What does that look like? So I'm gonna say this one is a level two. So I'm gonna choose essentials of stand-up paddle boarding. My course type is a skills assessment again, or sorry, a skills course again. Uh, it's essentials, and you can change this if you have a different name for it. That's not a problem. Um, I'm going to keep that same venue. I'm going to say this one is in the future. So let's just do June 30th. Um, for this one, that's all the same. Is this a non-insured skill ease report? I'm going to say no because I want additional information. Do I want to post it to the instructor calendar? Yeah, I do. I want to put it on the instructor calendar for the ACA. If I have a website link or any additional information, I can put it here and then this will show up on the course calendar on the ACA website so other people can find out about your course. Um, will this course be sanctioned, insured directly under a current Paddle America Club? If you're part of a Paddle America Club and that applies to you, you can say yes. If you say yes, it'll ask you which one. Uh, for me, I'm going to say no. And then am I requesting liability insurance? I'm going to say for this one, I am. I'm not under uh, someone who has insurance. I'm doing this on my own. So I will say yes. 
And so then it will say, are you requesting additional insurance coverage for a third party? So if you're working uh, with a government agency, you're using someone else's land, or there's a core sponsor, then I would say yes, that I want that. It's $20 for insurance. It's additional $20 for naming someone additionally insured. So a total of $40. If I have an assistant instructor, again, I can put that here. I can say, apply my address and then I'm going to register this one. It says registration was accepted and if you choose to have insurance, it automatically brings you to the insurance information page. So it's going to tell you what your fees are. If it is requested less than 10 days, there is an additional $25 fee. And then afterwards, um, you they'll send you an email that's um, actually, Afterwards, it'll be on your dashboard that says you need to finish this. And so you basically need to say if you pay additional fees for event memberships um, or if you have a late fee because you're reporting it later. So make sure if you get insurance, you do stuff beforehand as well as afterhand to kind of finish it. Because I said someone is additional insured, I would need to put that information in here for the additional insured party uh, so that they are covered by the insurance. And if there's any special requirements, and then how I'm gonna pay them, I go to the e-store, will I call in, will I um, send a check separately? Uh, e-store is a really simple way to do it, but whatever method works for you. So I'm gonna say this is XYZ Paddling Company. And again, I am in the test site. Um, they're at one, two, three, fun way. Uh, that happens to be in the United States. In, say, Medina. Let's say, Ohio. And we'll give the zip code of 44256. And then the relationship is they happen to be the landowner. So then I would say submit, oh, address. Let's say, we'll just use my address. All right, we'll submit that. So request for insurance has been received. Um, when you click go to eStore, a separate eStore tab will pop up. So I'm going to say go to eStore. And so now I can go ahead and pay my additional insured. I would add that to my cart. And then if there's anything else that applies to me, I would add that as well. Uh, so I can say I have additional insured. I'm going to add that item. Oh, I didn't choose this. All right, so education and instruction, add item. All right, so I have that, and then I would have to go back uh, to the e-store to be able to add the other one as well. The long way around is e-store, insurance fees. I already did additional insured. Event membership is after the fact. Late fees are after the fact. Rush can be beforehand, and then my sanctioning fees education, add item. So then I would pay my $40 and go through the checkout process through the e-store. All right, so that's a little bit about the insurance reporting a course. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard uh, so that we can look through this a little bit more. So to wrap that kind of up, course registration, easy report. You can see the ones that I added here, it's in the future. If I want to look through that, I can look through it here. Um, but again, if you have introduction to paddling, that's level one. Stand up paddle boarding is level two. If you just want a no insurance easy report, click that, super simple. If you wanna post to the calendar uh, or if you want insurance. All right, so once you do that, you can also look at course rosters. So the course that I just put in, I can select that course. And then if I need to for insurance purposes, having membership numbers, anything like that, I can add somebody in here. If you type in their name and you click search, it will come up 
And so I can add that person. Obviously it's a duplicate, so it's yelling at me, but I don't wanna put a random person's name in there. And so I can just put, um, if they're a participant, what that looks like. And then if I need to submit it, I can up have their credentials uploaded. You will need to upload your credentials um, as well as your waiver. This tells me that you have not done that um, or that I have not done it. And then this is your evaluation. Uh, so this is the bits and pieces that you can find out information. So so if I click here, uh, I can see that it is updated. This is where you can go to upload your first aid, CPR, and liability waiver. And I'll show you another place to be able to get to that in a little bit. All right, insurance request. You saw one way to do it. You can see the ones that are open that I am requesting insurance for. Liability waiver uploads. Um, and post course insurance fees. So you can look through that. The next one is course evaluations. Course evaluations, there are templates that you can look through and there are quite a few based on it. You may not see all of these, but course evaluation essentially is the evaluation that you will do for me on the course. And so this is what you will be rating the course on and then I will get a copy of this. At the end of the course, you must complete the course evaluation in order to get your certification. If you don't do a course evaluation, your certification will not be active. This will appear in your alerts on your dashboard. So make sure you do that. All right, so that is course evaluations. Once you have completed them, you can see that when you are a participant, you can see which ones I have completed. I can go ahead and look at that in the past. You'll be able to do that as well. And then Safety Education and Instruction Council, um, this is one that I need to do. It's here just so you can see it, but this is where it will show up that you need to complete it. So pending course evaluations you need to do, you need to complete it for this course. These are your completed ones. Candidate evaluations are going to be the ones uh, that you are uh, that are going to be for you. It's going to show your candidate evaluation. There are again a variety of templates to be able to make that easier. I'm attaching it in your email. It will also be on the uh, it'll also be on your dashboard. But this is a close-up of the evaluation I will be completing for you. You will have a formal teaching topic. You'll actually have two. You'll need to do an ideas and a stomp a uh, lesson plan for each of them. You will also have a variety of impromptu ones. So become, become prepared, ready to teach. I will note if you exceed me or are developing, uh, we're looking for me. You know, that's where we want to be. If you exceed, awesome. Um, and if you're developing, that's okay as well. It means you were able to do it to the degree that you needed to do it, but you're still developing. You should still work on this skill in particular, um, but you're still passing with any of these. If you get continued, like I talked about in the introduction video, that is what we marked here. And that means you need to be able to perform this better and then show it to an IT to get the continuation removed before you can become a certified instructor. So you can see that this again is your evaluation and you can get to that on the course management system. And then you'll be able to see your candidate evaluations here. So I can see which ones I have done for me. Member credentials and course histories, you can look through here. So I can see all of the courses that I have reported. So all of the ones, so back to 2017 when we created the course management system, uh, I can see all of the classes that I have reported so far. Uh, so this allows the ACA to see all of the cool classes that everyone is teaching, um, as well as help you keep tracks of all of those courses as well. I mentioned that you need to be able to upload your ACA waiver and CPR. If you go to member credentials and course histories, you can go here to upload them. It'll also be on your dashboard, but this is how you will update these um, so that they are ready to go for the course. There are also alerts, so you can go in and choose which alerts that you want to see on your dashboard. I personally just want to see anything that's coming through, so I have all of them, but it's up to you as to how you want to be able to set this up for yourself, but a variety of alerts that will come through. 
Another thing to look through is going to be SEIC meeting, so Safety Education Instruction Council. So we talked about this. You are welcome to come to the meetings. There's one coming up in the fall, whichever ones are coming up. They're only held a couple times a year. Uh, so you can click here and get a link to the virtual meeting. Uh, you can sit in and listen to it. There will be committee reports and notes. Obviously this one is a ways out, so there's nothing added, but you can go to the past meetings and you can see that there was one in the spring and so you can look through the one in the spring and you can download and view the agenda you can also see the virtual meeting and then you can see any motions uh, so different people have submitted a variety of motions and then they are voted on and then there are committee reports so you can see the subcommittee report anything you want so if you want to stay up to date and know what's going on it is available for you to be able to do that so this is an overview of the course management system. I encourage you to again, click through and have a better understanding of what is here. I will give you pop quiz questions about this throughout the course. So make sure you did listen to this in its entirety um, as you are preparing for the program and feel free to come back and look at it when you get ready to report your first course. If you have any questions about course management system, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. And again, you get to the course management system by going to AmericanCanoe.org, going to education, course management system to get to the live site. Click here. Your login credentials will be the same that you use to be able to get your certification. Thanks so much.